All right, so we're wrapping things up here for why I want on the top of the line prospects with the last name that I think most people would consider to being one of these absolutely pinnacle guys. Don't worry, we'll still make why I wants after this. There are a whole bunch of other not necessarily top of the line guys that I wanted to talk about as well in the series. We'll continue this schedule up until the draft most likely. But today's Why I Want is going over a name who has gotten himself all the hype in the world for people who have been keeping up with the U18s, the AJHL of all places, as well as the WHL. Thank you to those in the previous Why I Want for Simon Edvinson who commented carnage. In today's Why I Want, we're taking our steps back over to the Western Hockey League and talking about Dylan Gunther. Now, Dylan Genther is a name that a lot of people have been really projecting super highly up there on draft boards, but he isn't really the most consistently ranked across the board. I mean, who really is in this year's draft anyway? Regardless, though, Dylan Gunther is in this grouping that a lot of people would consider as potential top three, top two, maybe even first overall picks, depending on who you ask, and it's for good reason as well. Dylan Genther is a 6 foot 181 pound right wing player who suited up for three hockey teams this season, the WHL's Edmonton Oil Kings, the AJHL's Sherwood Park Crusaders, and the U18 squad for Team Canada. Last year, in 2019-20, his rookie season, he was a point-per-game player in the WHL, scoring 26 goals and 33 assists in 58 games played, putting his total up to 59 points, a performance that netted him the WHL's Rookie of the Year award. It put him on the radar for the 2021 NHL draft, and... Even though the WHL had a slow start, they had to wait a little bit before everything was settled in the stone, we had ourselves a little bit of action from Dylan Gunther to kick off 2020-2021. He played for the Sherwood Park Crusaders in the Alberta Junior Hockey League, which is Alberta Junior A Hockey. It's technically a step below the WHL. He put himself up five points in four games played. A lot of people would be quick to point out that, wait, this guy's supposed to be a number one, two, three eligible prospect for the 2021 draft. How the heck is he at five points in four games? He should be absolutely shattering the competition over there because of the range of talent that's available. And while that is true, I think it's somewhat fair to say that Dylan Gunther might have just been using the AJHL as a feeling out process. You know, you stopped your WHL season right in the middle because of a pandemic. So it's been a while since you've gone out there, played some organized hockey and did your thing. So Dylan Gunther, even though he wasn't going out there shattering worlds, he was still showcasing off the skills that made him the player that he is. Going back to the WHL though, for the Edmonton Oil Kings, he played 12 games and got 24 points. 12 goals, 12 assists. He had three four-point games where he had two goals and two assists each. He had two goals in a whole bunch of other games as well. He only went pointless in four of the 12 games he played this season, and he was still at two points a game. In fact, take a look at the WHL records for U18 players since 1986, and Dylan Gunther has the highest points per game out of all of these guys. Mike Madano had a 1.95 points per game as a U18 in 1987-88. Joe Sackick, a year before, had a 1.85 points per game. Patrick Marlowe's out here, 176. Obviously, you know, Connor Bedard is in here, but like, it's Connor Bedard, so we're gonna leave it at that. Then you see some of the other names over here, Trevor Linden, Ray Whitney, Evander Kane, Nugent Hopkins. Dylan Gunther's 2021 season in the WHL was legendary, and in fact, it is the best by far that we have seen in a while in terms of the points per game range for U18 players. However, you must consider the fact that the WHL was kind of weaker this year. Everybody was kind of getting off on a slow foot because of the pandemic, and it wasn't really the most seamless transition into gameplay. Making guys like Dylan Gunther, whose overall offensive abilities are so high, able to just feast on the league. Now, that's not to discredit Genther, he still finished the season with the highest points per game amongst everybody who played. Connor Bedard, Peyton Krebs, Stankoven, Connor Zari, all these guys underneath him. But still, you have to consider the fact that this wasn't really the same kind of year as normal. 
Dylan Gunther also played for Team Canada, where he had seven points in seven games played, which was pretty good. Not the best on the team, but it was still a capable stat line for sure. But the bread and butter for Dylan Gunther and his overall draft stock, I feel, is mostly due to his WHL play. He had to get that cut short because he was going over to the U18s, but at his core, Dylan Gunther was able to get all of these points because of his really good offensive abilities. He loves to shoot the puck, but he's also got a really good sniper playmaker mix to his game where he's able to acknowledge, okay, I can shoot it right here on the faceoff circle, but there's a guy over there in the back door that's open and there's nobody guarding that passing lane. I'm a pass it instead. He's got really soft hands, so if he needs to dangle around an opponent or two to free up a passing lane or a shot, he can do that. He's just got a really good mind for creating offensive zone decisions for high danger chances. All right, all the passing lanes are blocked off, I can just shoot it. He can snipe a puck once in a while. He likes to shoot from everywhere, so it's not really the most effective 100% of the time, but when he gets it off in a good area, man, he can really snipe it. He's not really the most explosive guy in the world, but once he gets up to top speed, he can go. He can also play penalty kill as well, because his overall mind for the game is so strong. He acknowledges where opponents are, where his teammates are. He's really good at facilitating play that way, and this skill combined with his passing, his creativity to facilitate play, and his ability to shoot the puck coming down the wings really makes him an offensive threat. So you take a look at that and you say, wow, good offensive package, he can play penalty kill, he was the best WHL score U18 since the gosh darn 1980s, he was better than Sakic and Mike Madano and all these guys. Why is his consolidated ranking 7th overall? Why does EP have him at 8? Future Considerations has him at 8 as well, you take a look at some of the scouting outlets, Sportsnet has him at 5, Recruit has him at 10, Dauber at 12, but TSN and Bob McKenzie have him at 2nd overall, what's the deal here with his draft stock? And you know, that's a really interesting conversation that we can have here, because when it comes to Dylan Gunther, Craig Button said this on the Track in the Draft podcast, and Will Scouching also said this a few times in his own Scouching Live episodes, but Dylan Gunther isn't really the kind of guy that projects to being a number one, play-driving, head-of-the-ship kind of guy. He's not like Matthew Barzal, who can skate around the zone, look for open guys, and pretty much create plays off of his own stick. He's not like Connor McDavid, who can just say, okay, give me the puck and I'll do something. He's a guy that really plays his best when you have other really good, really smart players alongside of him. It's why Button and Scouching themselves have said that Gunther probably could become a really good first-line complementary winger. It's not that Dylan Gunther is a bad player by any means, it's just that he plays his best when he has really smart, really aware talent around him to allow him to create those offensive opportunities. This is not the kind of guy that you're going to draft in the top five and then you're going to play him in the NHL in a bottom six role next year because he's not going to develop that way. Dylan Gunther is the kind of guy who, when he eventually makes the NHL, you give him a top six role and you play him with guys that know how to put the puck in the net, and that is how you're going to see him thrive. If he gets the Alexi Lafreniere treatment where he's playing with the Giuseppe or whatever, you're not going to see the best out of this guy, and he's not going to be better off for it. You give this guy the opportunity to play his game, which is a very cerebral, offensively capable, passing, sniping kind of game, and you do that by giving him the proper tools around him to succeed. Just because he can play penalty kill and just because he's got a solid frame doesn't mean that this guy is supposed to be your bottom six grinder and you got to work him up through the lineup before he eventually becomes a star. He could become a first line winger down the line, but you kind of need some other first line caliber guys in order for him to unlock his true potential. He's got the shot. He's got the playmaking. He's got a really good level of hockey IQ that allows him to make really good plays, but you need teammates that know how to free themselves up. You can't play him with scrubs because it's more like likely that he won't really be able to carry a line that way. William Nylander, Chris Kunitz, these kinds of guys weren't really the best individual players. Obviously, you have Malkin, you have Crosby on the Penguins, you have Latang. Kunitz isn't as good as them skill-wise. Obviously, in Toronto, Matthews and Marner and Tavares, they're all better than Nylander. But William Nylander and Chris Kunitz had a few things in common in that they could play so gosh darn well alongside of star talent. And these are the kinds of guys that really amplified their game when feeding off of the offensive abilities of the Marners and the Matthewses and the Crosbys that they played with. 
Dylan Gunther could be maybe in that same tier, but just a little bit better skill-wise. I'm not going to say he's Chris Kunitz, because Chris Kunitz, even though he was the Crosby sidekick, I guess you want to say, Chris Kunitz wasn't really a play-driving guy who you could play in your bottom six or middle six and he could get things done with the scrubs you have on that lineup. The points and the scoring and the ability, it's all there, and some people are super high on that, which is why he's ranked second overall by TSN and Bob McKenzie. But there are others that believe that his ceiling isn't really in that top tier, but just good enough that you can still say, all right, with the seventh overall pick, we feel that Gunther is the best player available because we have XYZ already in our system. We feel that they're going to be elite talents. And if they're playing with Dylan Gunther, who can shoot, who can play make, who can read the play well, this could be a very good combination into the long term future. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about Dylan Gunther over here in the scouting report we have. If you made it to the end of this video, comment in the comment section below, Spawn. Because we're sticking with superheroes and all that, and the Oil Kings, the Oilers, I mean, Todd McFarlane had a stake in the Oilers before, and he actually designed their logo, and Todd McFarlane's the Spawn guy. So Spawn is our comment section keyword. Talk to me in the comments what you think about Gunther, what he could be, what do you think he's gonna be? What if your team drafted this guy? Let me know in the comments. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed this video. Trolls 99. And bye.